In this video, we are connecting two things that I never would have expected to come together. On one hand, Home Assistant, which is known for making it super easy to connect many devices without a big setup and accessible for everyone. However, this is not quite the case when connecting with Google Home and Alexa, because you either have to activate the Nabucasa Cloud, Aumbroch, or set up a public IP and port forwarding and so on in a very complicated way to do it manually. On the other hand, Meta, which is supposed to be the future of smart homes and, and the protocol that, that all manufacturers are now focusing on. In reality, some manufacturers are dropping out and the whole thing doesn't work quite as well. But these two things can be combined so well that the problem with Home Assistant and the integration into ya, Google Home and Alexa changes how and I'll show you that in this video. Enjoy. Yes, in summary, probably everyone wants to be able to control Home Assistant with a Google Home or an Alexa on, or all the devices that are in Home Assistant. And is, at least I find, relatively disappointed when they first learn that to implement this, you have to pay four euros and 99 cents a month, which I admittedly find acceptable and also important to support the development of Home Assistant. However, the fact that it is mandatory to get any control over Google Home or Alexa, I don't find that great. Other systems like, for example, IO Broker, which I looked at in the AWO last video, actually do this in a bit better. And accordingly, it would be cool if you could somehow achieve this in Home Assistant uh, without a super complex setup. This is exactly what the so-called Meta Bridge solves. The idea behind it, we simply create a bridge that brings all the devices in Home Assistant as far as possible into Meta, and we can then share the items with Google Home and Alexa via the Meta protocol. Another advantage of this is, of course, that we don't have to expose our devices to the outside at all. We don't need any port forwarding or anything. And we also naturally utilize the local Meta advantage. So we have actually connected all devices locally, which ideally also brings speed advantages. I haven't tried the whole thing yet, but at least I prepared something. So I have a real Google Home here um, that we can use for this, an Android phone to set everything up, and my computer, which we will first use to set everything up. I would say, let's start in the Home Assistant overview and go to settings, then to add-ons, and then to the add-on store. Up here, click on the three dots, and then on repositories. Here, we need to add this repository. The whole thing is called MetaBridge. Once we've done that, we need to reload the page, and we should find the MetaBridge add-on in the list, which we can then install here. I've already done this, so it no longer appears here. After that, start the add-on. And then we get our own user interface that we can open. By default, a plugin is installed here, namely the MetaBridge Home Assistant. Theoretically, we could also directly attach devices natively in this MetaBridge. We wouldn't need to connect things directly with Home Assistant. Instead, we could additionally install ZigBee2MQTT ein directly here, for example, and thus throw all ZigBee 2MQTT devices directly into the Meta Bridge without needing Home Assistant in between. For simplicity's sake, I'll leave it at that for now. And if we click on devices with the Meta Bridge already installed with the plugin, we should ideally see all the devices that are in Home Assistant and are compatible. As you can see, there are already quite a few here. If this is a bit too much for someone and they don't want to share all devices, with Google Home or Alexa, they can also click on configuration on the plugin page and have the option to Im exclude devices they don't want to include in the Meta Bridge. For example, we can say we only try want to include devices that have light uh, in them, then only um, lights would be displayed. So you can just play around with it a bit here. You can also see examples um, below that you can use to set everything up. But for this video, I'll just leave it as it is. And I would say, let's try it out directly. In typical meta fashion, it should be um, quite simple. I'm now taking out my phone and I'm already in the Google Home app. Here you can also see my Google Home speaker. 
click here on Add Device, Meta Compatible Device. This time I allow camera access, scan the Meta QR code. Click on Agree. I'm ready. Set up anyway. And ideally, we see here that the log expands a bit and that the Google Home app also notices that the device is connected. So we click on Done and get a whole list of um, devices displayed. And if we now take a look at our dashboard, we can also see here that the office heating has been increased to 25 degrees. So in principle, this is how it works. Again, there is a small limitation for everyone who wants to go ahead and install it now. Two things. Firstly, as mentioned at the beginning, these are Meta devices and Meta does not support everything yet. This means that at the end of the day, you can only control the supported devices with it. For those who find this sufficient, who probably only have lamps and sockets, this could really be a great solution. Furthermore, and to, this is both good and bad news. The developer of the plugin has already stated that it will not be further developed for the time being because actually this MetaBridge is a completely independent plugin and someone else essentially wrote the Home Assistant integration for it. However, he is now taking a break and is simultaneously developing a completely separate add-on, which is not based on the Meta Bridge itself, but is a true Home Assistant integration, specifically Hall for Meta, to integrate Home Assistant into other devices. The whole thing will therefore have a completely unique UI and so on and so forth. In the meantime, the development is on pause. Only bugs and critical errors and so on are being fixed. For those who still want to take a look at it, because I think it's a very, very cool option, um, feel free to check the description. For anyone who wants to get started with Home Assistant right away, I would recommend a, this video here to where I introduce a, a server for Home Assistant. And for those who haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you can do so now. Feel free to help me improve this statistic a bit and maybe reach 9,500 subscribers by the end of the year. That would be really cool. If you have any questions, write them in the comments. We'll see each other again next week. Until then, take care and goodbye.